song he wants to hear your heart cry today you just have to choose to lift him up can we just lift our voices in this moment whatever comes out let it let it rise let your praise rise in this moment oh you're worthy you're worthy lord oh how i love you how i need you oh i'm lost without you I'm lost without your love, Lord. There's nothing better to be in your presence is all I desire, Lord. There's nothing better. There's nothing better. There's nothing better. This right now, there's nothing better. seconds. All the money in the world won't let you buy one single second more than the next guy. And once that second is gone, it's gone forever. Look, there goes one right now. Another one, gone. You'd think that we would judiciously use such a limited and valuable gift. You'd think that we would choose wisely how to spend, no, invest our time. But do we? Really? I mean, after taking the time for eating and sleeping and all the other basic necessities, do we really use this gift the way we should? Think of all the great things you could do in 24 hours, all the lives you could touch, all the significant changes that could be made in your life and others. The fact is, you could actually make a difference in this world in 24 hours, or not. So, how are you investing your time? How are you investing your time? This is New Year, and... Uh, you're like everybody else on the planet it's a time to start over and and we begin to think about resolutions right which simply means we're going to resolve to do something we didn't make it last year in doing and uh, I don't know if you're like me maybe you've already made those and you've already blown them you know 
know, it's like seven days into it. Uh, you still, you, you haven't followed through. This is my sweetheart. This is my girlfriend. This is my best friend. We've been married for 52 years. I, I don't, I can't ever make it preaching without a kiss before I preach. So I want you to understand, and I mean from her, but... Uh, any of the rest of you want to kiss me too, it's okay, but but, but I want her kisses. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm here today because I'm going to help her preach, because she's got to preach today. She's, she's going she's to yeah. she, She's laughed at that because she said, I'm not a preacher. So this is a series on stewardship, on being a steward. I don't know if you know what a steward is. Let me read you a definition. A biblical worldview of stewardship can be considered defined as, here it is, utilizing and managing all resources God provides for the glory of God and the betterment of his creation. The central essence of biblical worldview stewardship is managing everything God brings into a believer's life in a manner that honors God. Stewardship quite simply is recognizing that everything we have and everything we are is a gift from God and being grateful and generous with those gifts. God reveals his perfect and infinite love for us most visibly in his son, Jesus Christ. The steward makes God's love visible by imitating Jesus. Isn't that good? So we, we've begun with steward, stewarding sunrise. Hmm. I'm I'm not a morning person. I've I've never been. In fact, we've always laughed about it that we're second shift people. As a pastor, no one comes to counseling at nine a.m. Ten, one, two. Everybody wants to come after work. I mean, you can go to the doctor. You can go to. You can do anything and get off work, but you can't come see the preacher without waiting till six, seven, eight, nine, ten o'clock at night. So, so we're second shift, but what I've been amazed with with these 52 years is when I go to bed and I wake up in the morning, you don't want to look at me. I'm a mess. In fact, this is a picture of what I look like in the morning just to, uh, to make it. <laughs> I have to, I have to, <laughs> I have to prop up the eyeballs. Um. But my wife can go to bed and sleep for seven hours and wake up the next morning as beautiful as she was when she went to sleep. I don't know how. I don't want her to kiss me in the morning. My breath is horrible in the morning. She, her breath is perfect 24 hours a day. This is a picture of Glenda getting out of bed. <laughs> anyway, I, I would like to consider that you accept this uh, sharing today as stewarding S-O-N rise because you see we we all have a gift from the Lord today it's called January 7th this is a day God gave you it's kind of amazing that you have this day all of us I I look back on 2023 and realize every moment of every day that I have is a gift because I might not have been here. I, I want you to understand when we, from the first moment of our morning, waken to realize we belong to the Son, He belongs to us, and we steward sunrise, whether that's at 6 o'clock in the morning or 9 o'clock in the morning or you sleep till 11. It's realizing that this day belongs to Jesus and how will we set aside this day? How do we as stewards realize it belongs to him? It's, it's his gift. He's given us 24 hours here to live and what are we going to do with it? And I think the way we establish our mornings defines whether or not it's going to be a day full of God's love. So Linda has a, a discipline that is that has affected her life and I will tell you this I believe it has affected her kids and me and probably most of y'all and whether you know it or not it's her devotional life 
It's who she is from first thing in the morning. Psalms 118.24, and it says, This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Could I even paraphrase that a little bit by saying, This is the day the Lord has given me to steward. I will rejoice and be glad in it. So, Glenda, how do you start your day? What's the first thing that happens after you climb out of bed? And I go, no, don't kiss me. My breath's bad. And you go, what to do what? I go brush my teeth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just being honest. Yeah. <clears throat> I brush my teeth and get ready to get in the shower. Yeah. So I begin, as soon as I <clears throat> am in the shower, I'm aware of the fact that the, the Lord has given me this day and I've asked him in recent years very intentionally to make me have a heart of gratitude so I begin right away thanking the Lord for what's uppermost on my mind and if I'm candid I thank the Lord for hot water <laughs> I thank the Lord for a nice shower I thank the Lord that our that my house is warm that I have a good bed to live in, or to sleep in. It does seem like I live in it yeah, sometimes, in it but sometimes. Um, very practically, I, I just say to the Lord how grateful I am for things that matter to me in that moment. And uh, I begin to specify specific things, and oftentimes the Lord will bring a song to my mind and you can tell from the sound of my voice and two serious vocal surgeries, 20 something, 30 something, almost 40 years ago now, I can't sing anymore. I can't sustain notes. I go through the motions, and, but, but I don't sing, even alone. It's that scary. Sometimes I jack up the, my radio in my car and attempt to sing and it's just not something that you want to listen to and I thank the Lord that he enjoys a joyful noise uh, and that's kind of what it is but because of that I often will just say aloud the lyrics to a song whatever the Lord brings to mind one of my favorites is joyful joyful we adore thee God of glory Lord of love Hearts unfold like flowers before thee. Hail thee as the son of love. And so you begin to praise the Lord with just saying just singing, songs. Just saying songs. Yeah, and, and I, I said, so what's next? And she said, well, I don't know if you want to tell everybody. So I said, yeah, I do. So she starts scrubbing and she starts, Glenn's is a methodical person. She does things certain ways. She's OCD and so she starts scrubbing with her hands and and she goes through this process and while you're scrubbing from one place to another what do you do well you really want me i to do what well, yeah i do i want you to tell that was a him him saying that i'm methodical is a nice way of saying i'm a rut person boring no, because i do the boring. same thing the same way all the time yes because i am never clinically diagnosed but I have all the marks um, I have a I have a thing about needing to shave my legs every day and as I shave my legs I say the books of the Bible because I don't want to forget where they are so as I start shaving I say Genesis Exodus Leviticus Numbers Deuteronomy Joshua, Judges, Ruth. Yeah, she's got it down. We won't go through all of them, but she, <laughs> she does it every day. So she's got those, those books of the Bible down. And so you wash your hands and you wash your feet, you wash your, your legs, yes. you're shaving, and what do you do then? When I finish saying the books of the Bible, I say, I thank you, Lord, for your word. Your word is a light to my path. And help me, Lord, to hide your word in my heart today so that I will not sin against you. I thank you for your word. So she begins with praise and worship. I, I, I know some of you say, well, I, my shower is three seconds. I couldn't, you know, say much there. You know, everybody's got a morning routine, and whatever that is, I'm just asking you to consider putting the Lord in the middle of it. 
and and you can <laughs> you can you can probably do some spiritual things in the morning around everything from potty time to shower to brushing your teeth and and can I suggest that you don't need to kiss your phone good night and kiss your phone good morning right. uh, some of us that's the only thing we do we 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 immediately turn on our phone we're sitting on a potty and we're going through stuff and we're we're doing phone all the time that can be destructive this is time for you to establish this is the day, Lord, you've made, and I'll be rejoice and be glad in it. So Glenda finishes her shower. Well, before I finish my shower, while I'm still in yeah. there, I begin to make declarations over my life. Well, that's right. uh, I have learned the principle that nothing happens in the kingdom until first there's a declaration of that thing. I believe that declarations activate the spiritual realm and this is probably one of the most significant things I do in the course of my day sure go ahead so I begin with Lord I thank you that you have given me the authority to use your word and therefore I declare your word over my life right now I declare that through Jesus Christ I am 100% loved and worthy to receive everything Jesus paid for me. I thank you, Lord, that I am dead to sin and alive to live supernaturally. Therefore, my prayers are powerful and effective. I declare that my God richly supplies all of my needs. Therefore, I walk in ever-increasing health. I live under supernatural protection. I prosper in all my relationships. I consistently bring God encounters to other people. Every member of my family is wonderfully blessed and radically loves Jesus. I uproariously laugh every time I hear a lie from the devil. Lord, help me to discern every lie. Recognize it for what it is. I declare that I set the course of my life with my words. Therefore, God is on my side. I cannot be discouraged or defeated. As Abraham did, I speak God's promises over my life. And my faith is being strengthened to possess everything Jesus won for me. I am the head, not the tail. I have insight and wisdom. I have divine strategies and I have authority. I have a sound mind. Today I will think the right thoughts. I will say the right words. I will make the right decisions in every situation I face. I expect today to have divine appointments to lead people to Christ, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to prophesy life, to bring deliverance, to release signs and wonders and bless every place I go. I expect today will be the best day of my life, spiritually, emotionally, relationally, and financially, in Jesus' name. My angels are carrying out the word of God on my behalf. Every attack headed my way is diverted right now in the name of Jesus. I speak to the raging waters of my mind, my emotions, my body, and my family. And I say, peace, be still to each of these areas of my life. I speak to every mountain of lack, stress, discouragement, and depression. And I say, be cast into the sea in Jesus' name. I speak to this day, and I call you blessed because I serve a mighty God 
who will do exceedingly abundantly beyond anything I could ask, think, or imagine. I declare I serve a good, good father, and I eagerly anticipate your goodness today. Thank you, Lord, for the power of your word. Help me to be mindful of what I have declared as I go through this day where it has significance and seize it, claim it, and watch it work. Glenda has these declarations that she has written out over time and, and then prays them every single day. Uh, we made copies of these, if you'd like some, in her handwriting. Uh, they're available for you after service. I, I suggest you understand the power of declaring the things that God has already told us because it is, if, she, if you remember what she said, it is in the declaration that we release ministry angels to, to carry out the word of God. And they wait, for our, they, they wait for our commands. They wait for us to declare the things of the kingdom. And if you don't understand that, you don't understand New Testament uh, economy because we are the ecclesia we are the judicial branch of Jesus on the earth and that when I preached last week I think you need to understand that God has sent his Holy Spirit in us to convict and convince the world of their sin of their need for righteousness and of judgment and when we speak the things of God we declare the judgment of God over wrong and evil and and destruction and, and horrible things in our lives, and yet we then release also the power and the presence of God to do wonderful things. And so my sweetheart has, has said these things over and over and over to where they've become just second nature for her, but I encourage you to, to take a... You don't have to make these yours. Write yeah. your own. Right. But, but I will tell you this, that, that all of these have scripture verses on them, every single one of them. And, you, and if you just took the time to let this be a Bible study for you and actually study these scriptures, I bet you would find you would want to make declarations like this every day. And so she, she's finishing her shower then. She's made her declarations. When and I then, finish grooming, I go downstairs to start breakfast. And I'm a rut person, so I eat the same thing every morning. And as I put my bread in the toaster, I pinch off a corner and go lay it on a on a napkin I pour grape juice into a little shot glass and and I say Lord I thank you in fact you. we're going to do that together you have your communion elements we're going to take communion with Glenda I want to I encourage you folks that you need to know that you can take communion every single meal I, I actually think when the Lord said and when you eat break bread when you eat and drink remember me and I, I would suggest that you just take a spiritual moment I you know I think we've probably gone from remembering Jesus to praying over our meal and you know bless this meat let's eat kind of a deal more than just recognizing Jesus and his blessing and giving us the meal so Glenda, and you know what it's so funny you, since you told me that you break off the piece of bread I didn't know this but I've gone into the loaf she has she has special bread that she loves from pit from Publix, and I've gone in there looked and think, why is there little pieces of bread off the top of the, the loaf? And I don't know. Missing yeah, pieces. Yeah, little missing pieces. So I, so she she pulls off a little piece, and now I know why. I've, I've figured it out. I thought we had bugs or something, but it, the big bugs. So, so what do you do? Is, this is small and probably too small to do it, but when I pinch off a piece of bread, I break it. And as I break it, I say, Lord, I thank you for your broken body that was broken for me. I receive your sacrificial laying down your life on my behalf. I thank you that you were wounded for my transgressions. You were bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement for my peace was laid on you, Jesus. And by your stripes, I am healed. I receive this bread in Jesus' name and take what it means to be manifest in me 
So let's eat this bread together. This bread's a little harder than Publix. Way harder. At that point, I usually say, Lord, I thank you that my children are devoted to you, that they love you. And I declare, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Therefore, I call forth the will of God for my grandchildren, those that still have yet to make decisions about whether they're going to follow Jesus or not and what they're going to do with their lives in terms of the kingdom. So I call for the will of God for Ariana and Blaze, for Jaden and McKenna, for Grant and Brody, for Revel and Shiloh, for Asher, Larkin, and Baby Ray. I claim them for the kingdom. I ask you to build them into men and women of God who will love you with their whole heart for their whole lives and extend your kingdom. I thank you for that in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for this cup, for the blood that you shed for me. I thank you that this is not just blood of another spotless lamb, but this was precious blood, for it washed the sins of man. This blood has healed my body and set my spirit free. I'm so glad your precious blood still, still today, right now, flows from Calvary. I thank you for it. Thank you for shedding every drop that I would stand in healing. Let's drink it together. Thank you, Jesus. So then I enjoy breakfast. And it's one egg. She has an iron skillet that's about this big. She turns it on and it gets real, real hot. She takes one egg, breaks it, stirs it up, pours it in, and pushes it together kind of, and then turns the pan off and it cooks it perfect. And she has her one piece of of Publix bread that is, uh, what is it called? Italian five grain. Five, five grain. It's, it's great bread, a little tiny skinny bread. And she eats her breakfast and she goes into the schoolroom where she begins her devotions. So for the, since 19, 2019, I'm using a specific devotional by Bill Johnson. It's taken from a book he wrote, and it's called A Life of Miracles. The first time Pastor and I went to Idaho to visit Aslan, I found this devotional book in the bedroom where we were staying. And I used it the whole week we were there. And so I told my husband or my kids or somebody that I would like to have this book, and Aslan gave me this very book that was in the bedroom. So she's used it for five years, and for five years solid, she's read it. It's 365 days, so there's a devotion. It only takes just a few minutes, but uh, it's a, and it's one of the devotion books she uses. What do you like about this one? What makes it special? Well, what I've discovered is that having been raised in the church, you think you've heard everything you could possibly hear from the Word, but I have, I have grown to love Bill, Pastor Bill Johnson and the insight that he has in the Word. And um, he, has, he has made the reality of a spirit-filled life, he's made it attainable to me in terms of what the Lord expects from us. You know, I've always thought that everything Jesus did in miracles, he did because he was the Son of God, the Son of Man. And I've heard a gazillion times that he was a man living in the power of the Holy Spirit. But really, it wasn't really until I began to use this devotional, and maybe it's because Bill Johnson can say the same thing 2,500 ways, that it finally penetrated, and it has just encouraged me 
to begin to uh, be intentional about putting into practice the things that I have read. And so um, it's encouraged me to expect my life. You know, one of the declarations that I made was, I am dead to sin and alive to live supernaturally. Therefore, my prayers are powerful and effective. My life should be powerful and effective because Holy Spirit is living in me. And the same Holy Spirit that gave Jesus the authority to make manifest miraculous changes in people's lives and in the environment, in, in nature itself, he's given us that authority. That's right. And I began to feel very, very responsible for that power that I steward Holy Spirit's tremendous availability to me. And, and this, this devotional is one of the things that has helped me do that. I honestly don't think I've ever read a, a page or, or shared devotion that I didn't see some insight that, I had, that was quickened to me. And regardless of what you're using as a devotional, um, expect the Lord. I encourage you to pray because I've used this over and over again, but I pray and say, Lord, help me see something that I haven't seen before. Quicken to me your word. Change me because of this time I'm spending. I, 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 I want to encourage you to find a devotional that stirs you up, that teaches you something. And, and this is one that she used. I, we're going to just have to speed through this process. The other one is another one by Bill, uh, and it's called Hosting uh, presence. His Presence. So the, the difference in these two is real simply. This is telling you how to live your life powerfully uh, so that you can minister and do things in the kingdom. This is going to release you to things. But the second book she reads is, is about intimacy. It's about, it's about knowing him and being close to him because there's a pattern here in her devotions. Her, her time with the Lord is, I want to be good for the world, but I want to be good first with you. Does that make sense? And so that's the second book. And do you have something short you can do with it, babe? I've shared this many times with with folks in my divorce care class. There is uh, one of the most meaningful principles in the Bible of Bible interpretation is that of first mention of something in Scripture. It carries extra weight. If if you teach your child something that sets the standard and every other time they hear mention of that same thing they will measure it according to the standard that you set because you brought it up first and that is a principle that is seen in scripture the very first time the house of god is mentioned in scripture anybody got a guess for where that was it was when jacob was wrestling with the lord listen to this scripture Jacob departed from Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and spent the night there because the sun had set. He took one of the stones of the place and put it under his head and lay down in that place. He had a dream, and behold, a ladder was set on the earth with its top reaching to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I didn't know it. He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. He called the name of that place Bethel. It's, he said this scripture sets the standard for a subject that the rest of scripture will support and add to us. The rather strange part of this example of the house of God is that there was no building there. It's not a tabernacle or a tent that is movable. Neither is it, it, is it a temple that's permanent. It is God with man on the side of a hill. It's a great picture of reality from God's perspective. The house was not a building. It was not some type of structure built from bricks and mortar. From the very beginning, God... God's vision for his house was a place of divine intersection, two worlds colliding. In the New Testament, this prophetic picture of God's house finds substance in Christ. 
Not only do heaven and earth meet up again, they find their intersection in a person. John 1 51 says it was Jesus. Now because of his shed blood and work of atonement, the church has become this place of divine intersection. I am the house of God. That was the revelation. I you got are the church. That. Yes. So she reads through these two books. She's gone through uh, a number of devotional books and if you want some other titles, there's some great ones that she's enjoyed these two she's been using now for five years and this is the sixth year now she doesn't just read a devotional this takes just a few minutes of time and it's inspirational and it leads to then her bible study and uh, and she has uh, I, we all have processed don patty waller is always every year handing out little markers that you can go through the Bible in a whole year and read the whole Bible through. Some people do that, enjoy it. Others feel like the, the need for going through the Bible needs to be topical things where you study portions of Scripture. I, I just encourage you to get into the Word. Um, Glenda has been uh, thrilled about reading. She is, because she's OCD, she doesn't just read a little bit, she reads it all. So, she, so for the last several years, she's been using five different versions of the Bible and she'll read a portion of passage of scripture she reads all the notes that are in it she'll read everything in all five versions so she's been reading her NIV the New Living Translation the Amplified Bible the Message Bible oh and there's actually another one two more the and voice. a Bible that uh, uh, Brian gave us that was called the, the Voice the Voice, which is very contemporary with lots of great notes and then the Passion Bibles. And if you don't know anything about the Passion, it is, I think it's a great Bible to read and have devotions. But more, more importantly, and probably the greatest thing about the Passion Bible is its notes. The uh, commentary is The commentary is, phenomenal. is tremendous. Uh, the gentleman, and we don't have time going to go in much detail, but tell us about Brian just a little bit. Brian, Brian um, Simmons was a, was a, is a linguist, and he was a missionary. And uh, so his gifting is languages, and he has chosen so many times, you know, our language, the English language, has so many nuances. It's kind of like our colors have nuance, you know, like you can say green, or you can say olive green, or you can say army green, or you can say chartreuse, or, you know, hunter green. There's all those kinds of things. For this translation, Brian chose, in his words, the warmest terms. If there were five, if there were five words that were absolutely accurate, and one of the things I love about the about the Passion's commentary is he will, when he makes a note about something, he wants you to look down and see this is this is literally what the Aramaic said. And Aramaic is what Jesus spoke. This is literally what the Hebrews said. Um, and, but he chooses in the actual text part to use the warmest of, of those terms available to him. So, his, so there is an emotional sense to the way his text is written. If you were here yesterday, you heard Pastor read the 23rd Psalm from from the passion and it's read beautiful a line or two of it the lord is my best friend and my shepherd i always have more than enough he offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love so he takes a passage and he says this is this is how it really could be translated here and his whole deal is to put the passion in it yeah. um and and when he talks that. about the love of the lord in in the scriptures it's deep but if you if you didn't buy this version for anything more than the notes I'm telling you it's worth it and I have been encouraged and excited over reading uh, I want to give you an it. insight that I got from from his notes that I had never seen before that was so cool you remember the story about Abraham lying to the, to King Abimelech about Sarah he did okay. that to keep Abimelech from killing him and taking Sarah and so okay, that's taken from Genesis 20 um this is some of what Brian's notes say. God not only, this is from verse 3, God not only spoke to the righteous in dreams, but he approached a lost man to warn him of wrong behavior so he could correct the situation. 
You remember God spoke to Abimelech? To don't touch her. God told Abimelech that Abraham would pray for him. Because Abimelech's wives were, were barren. Right, and plus he, was, he had sickness or something happening. So God told Abimelech that Abraham would pray for him to live because Abraham was a prophet. The Lord called Abraham a prophet to Abimelech. This is the first time the word prophet is found in the Bible. In verse 17, the first healing in the Bible was through a childless man, Abraham. Abraham. He prayed for the very thing he had not yet received. Remember, God had promised that he was going to have more kids than he could count. And he's still waiting for that to happen. So at a time of child, childlessness, he prays that Abimelech's many wives would have their wombs opened and they, so that they could have children again because the Lord had stopped it because of Abimelech's, Abimelech's taking Sarah. When the last two verses of Genesis 20 are read together with the first two verses of Genesis 21, we see that Isaac's conception occurred as a result of Abraham's prayer for another person who had an identical need. I thought that was very insightful. Isn't that cool? So Linda, after she spends some time with the Lord in Bible study, then she begins her prayer time. And uh, she does so via three by five cards. I have all my, I'm OCD, so I have all my prayer needs categorized. <laughs> and um, as, I don't take it lightly if you ever ask me to pray with you about something. I go home and write it on one of my index cards, wherever it fits, whatever it belongs with. And the first one is, is Thanksgiving, and I begin to thank the Lord for answered prayer, prayers that I have specifically prayed that the Lord has answered. It just so happens the first thing on my list for answered prayer is Trent and Alana. I thank the Lord that he brought them together. That's after many, many years of intercession. Yeah, I said, God, get rid of her. Please move her out. Get a, <laughs> bring a man into her life. <laughs> That's not so, but I had to try to ease her. She, she cried here. Quit your crying, babe. We're trying to hang it together, hold it together. So she starts with praise and thanksgiving. If we prayed, if she's prayed, you're on her Thanksgiving list. In fact, can I tell you this? Most of you don't know, but if you've ever mentioned anything, your kids are were troubled, there was problems in her lives and things. She's praying for it every single day. Every single day. So tell us how you pray. Thanksgiving? I pray. For, you don't want me to read that, do you? You can do anything you want. It's yours okay, for the next well, 10 minutes. I'll, I'll I just tell you some funny things that are on here. My brother got hit when he was driving a tractor by a big tree. And it could have killed him. So I thank the Lord that he preserved my brother's life. I thank the Lord for Barb and Patty saying yes to children's ministry. I thank the Lord for many, many healings that have too many to, to recount. Um, I thank the Lord for Steve and Lee's property purchase. I thank the Lord that he healed Lee's woundedness at a specific time. I thank the Lord for John and Susie White's interest in my grandson, Jaden. I thank the Lord for Trent's job at Satterfield and that he got promoted. I thank the Lord he healed Susie White of diverticulitis and fibromyalgia. I thank, you that, I thank the Lord that he's provided funds for my grandson to go to school. I thank the Lord that he healed my husband's body. I thank the Lord that he replaced my dryer that um, that Marcus bought what I needed to repair my garage door, and Trent came and repaired it. I thank the Lord that he healed Laney, Laney's body. I thank the Lord that John and Susie said yes to youth ministry that he healed Carly of food allergies, that Shiloh's delivery was safe and he healed the ties in his mouth. 
I thank the Lord for Susie's, Sissy's job in advance. Those are just some of the things. It's like three cards worth. Then I go on to pray for my children, for no, my me family. First. Me first. I'm the top of this. <laughs> just tell the truth. I'm first. I need the most prayer. I, I, said I, would, I said I wasn't going to say any more, but that's it. Okay. I really am serious about praying over my family uh, because I believe it's critical. And I encourage you to pray specifically for your kids, your spouse, whomever. I ask the Lord to give my husband insight and anoint him to make the latter years of his ministry more profitable, more fruitful, more effective than all the years before. I pray. Then I begin to name my children. I pray for April and Jason, for Ariana, Blaze, and Jaden, for Andy and Cameron, McKenna, Grant, and Brody, for Ari and Micah, Revel and Shiloh, for Alana and Trent, for Aslan and Janelle, for Holly and Marcus, Asher, Larkin, and Baby Ray. I pray that those of us who are working in a marketplace job, we will be anointed to affect those people. I pray that the Lord will lead our steps, that he will stir up in each one of us spiritual hunger for his presence and to know his word. I pray that we will have discernment and wisdom, that my children will parent like Father God parents, that we will hear his voice and obey what he says. I pray that we will all take risks to speak into other people's lives and declare the kingdom. I believe faith is spelled R-I-S-K. That you have to take a risk to do it. Then I quote Acts 4, 29 and 30 over my entire family. I say, Lord, empower us as your servants to speak the word of God freely and courageously. Stretch forth your hand of power through us to heal and to move in signs and wonders by the name of your holy son, Jesus. After, after I pray that, I make a declaration over my family. I declare over my children that Jesus Christ will be formed in them that my children, the seed of the righteous, will be delivered from the evil one, that my children will be taught of the Lord and great will be their peace, that they will train themselves to discern good from evil and have a good conscience toward God, that God's laws will be in their minds and on their hearts, that they will choose companions who are wise, not fools, nor sexually immoral, nor drunkards, nor idolaters, nor slanderers, nor swindlers, that they will remain sexually pure and keep themselves only for their spouse, asking God for his grace to keep that commitment. I pray that my grandchildren, I declare that my grandchildren will honor their parents, and I ask the Lord to develop gratitude in all of us. I, then I, my next card has to do with blessing, and I begin to bless CAU's leadership team with vision and unity to bless this congregation with revival, a great awakening that he will multiply our finances, multiply our numbers, that we will gather a harvest, that we will make disciples and fruit will remain. I pray for Dallas Jenkins and the chosen. I pray the Lord will download into his mind everything he means for him to write into that series. I pray for the ACLJ and Jay Seclo that every lawyer on his team has the word of God in his mouth, on his lips, that they go into the courtroom and declare the word of God to execute justice. I pray for my doctor, Dr. Billy Taylor, that the Lord make him a blessing to all of his patients, that he gives him the desires of his heart and makes him fruitful in every way. I pray for the Coles. I pray for Carlin and Rachel, Wyatt and Max and Specific things for family members that where I know they have needs. I pray for Studio Greenville here that is a church where Eric and Candace Johnson pastor. I pray for several other pastors and um, for various specific needs I know they have. Uh, That's good. So that I pray for John and Susie's youth 
ministry. I pray for Trent's home church and his pastor that they will experience Pentecost in that place. I pray for Ethan Poston, who is an autistic pastor's child that I know. He is 20 years old and he cannot read. I'm telling you this because I want you to pray with me about this. He cannot read. I believe the Lord can download supernaturally recognition of the English language into this kid's mind. And then I pray for Jaden, who needs a job. Y'all can pray about that, too. I pray for deliverance from wicked leadership in this, in this country. I pray he will unseat and dethrone every wicked authority. I ask him to blow on the wealth and the source of power of specific people. Yeah, I will they're not specific, name. and we won't talk so about it. So we won't we get shut down. Do That's right. I pray for entertainment influ influencers. I pray that he will expose and dismantle every satanic scheme happening. Then I pray a very, very long list of people who need salvation, and some of your families are on there. Marie Mays at the top of the list. I pray for spiritual growth for specific people. Um, some of them I know need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Some of them need to just grow up spiritually and be committed to the Lord and put him first. Um, so I pray for them by name. There are people that I have met in places like Longhorn and my favorite place to eat. Um, there have been specific people I've met there, and I have their names on that list. That the Lord, some of them know the Lord, some don't. But I ask the Lord to. I, I pray the next card has to do with deliverance, and there's lots of people on here who need deliverance from depression or from alcoholism, from mental illness, for self harm. I've, I ask the Lord every day to release January 6th prisoners from incarceration. I then begin to pray for provision, specific provision needs. We need a lamb's pastor in this church. We need the funds and somebody who's called of God to minister to children. I've been praying that for 20-something years, I think. Um, I pray for ministries, people in this body who are already ministering, that they will be anointed, that they won't be weary and well-doing and and that needs will be met where I know there are specific needs. I pray for those. Too. I pray I have a whole lot of uh, specific needs for, for healing in people's bodies. And if you could see this card, I have marked out some because the Lord healed them. <laughs> Took care of that. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to be faithful there because we have suffered so much. I have like four or five cards that have to do with healing. I pray for people who have emotional wounds. Uh, I pray for people who are grieving the loss of loved ones like Johanna and Barbara, and the Dix family, my friends Butch, Gay, and Andy. There's a whole long list of them. I pray for prodigals by name. I, I ask the Lord to bring Malachi and Jamin and Elijah and Alex Sweat and Rachel Levine and Lance Sweat and Montgomery and Carrington, Rebecca and Tabitha, um, Lindsey Snyder and Ken Take, Kenny Brown, and so much other people that you wouldn't know, but I have them on my list. Samuel and Becca Gatlin belong to Donnie and Debbie. I pray that people will ha have a relationship with the Lord stirred up if it's grown cold. I pray for marriages that have failed. And when I've finished reading all my cards, I thank you, Lord, that you heard me. And I thank you that you have promised that you will hear and answer prayer when we pray according to your will. And I believe everything that, that I have written is. And then I go on through the day believing that as the Lord prompts me, I, I need to pray for what, whoever is in my mind. And, and again, let me refer to the declarations. I believe the Lord wants me to be aware in the course of the day where the declarations that I have made have significance in the moment. 
because I don't want it to be just because I've memorized it. I don't want it to be something I say and then forget about for the rest of the day. But I want it. I want to know that when I have made a dis, have to make a decision, I have declared. I have a sound mind. Today, I'm going to think the right thoughts. I'm going to say the right words. I'm going to make the right decision in every situation I face. And I believe that our agreement with the word is what activates spiritual things to happen. Absolutely big. You say, I don't have two hours. It would take me two hours of the day. It, well, it might, but do you have 30 minutes? Do you have 10 minutes? Do you have things you do that you are kind of brain dead like driving to work or driving to school could you take that 10 minutes or that 20 minutes to pray you can always pray while you're doing something else yeah while you wash dishes or vacuum or something in fact glenda's deal was when all the kids were at the house and she was doing the laundry everything she would do if she was ironing or folding their clothes she was praying over them this outfit belongs to april and she'd be praying for april and this one's andy's and this is Ari's and Alana's and Asen had lots of dirty clothes, so he got lots of prayer. Uh, you know, let, let your day be spontaneous to say, I will steward this day. I will steward it from the sunrise because he has risen in my life. And, and I want to say to him, by my just being a spiritual person, this is my opportunity to shine for Jesus. This is my opportunity to love God. This is my opportunity to grow in grace to learn something I haven't known and that's why my little Bible study my little time of reading my little time of devotion sets my day so that all day long I'm, av I'm available all day long I can connect all day long I can intercede all day long I can worship and praise all day long I can be grateful and thankful you can change your atmosphere and the atmosphere of people around you it's your decision and and I, I'm proud of my sweetheart because she has she has this pattern she's done, and it's just a pattern. The things are available to you. This information I put here, by the way, there's lots of stuff you said. I'm just I'm not really good for reading. Well, sign up for Right Now Media. It's a it's available here. It's a free media thing, and it's got. It might have a 10 minute devotion. You do it on your phone, and it, they'll do you a little video. It's got great kid stuff too for your children. You say I don't I don't know how to connect them. Well. Uh, open right now it's it's free it's we we've purchased this availability to everybody in our church to have right now media if you don't know what it is come to me give me your telephone number your address your email and i'll i'll get you signed up immediately um this stuff is available to you do something spiritual in your life and if you can do it like glenda does and you can read and you can set it aside some time you say well i i you know i i only have 15 20 30 minutes a day well that's fine how about on a saturday you kind of say well you know what i'm going to take and give the lord an hour or two hours and study something cool give the lord something of you and 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 i i don't ask you just to make it as a new year's resolution just make it as a lifestyle and start small and it'll grow Get excited about some stuff in order to grow. Just be spiritual on purpose, right? Be godly on purpose. Be good stewards of what God's given you. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thank you for your love to us. Thank you for the special time we've spent in your presence and worship and praise. Thank you for Glenda's testimony. Thank you for the encouragement to, to make a, a declaration, to make declarations in our prayer time to be on purpose connected to you and be a good steward. Help us to be good stewards.